1947, right? So do the math, 75 years is what was being celebrated this year. What does the, hearing that milestone mean to you and, and to the company and, and sort of what you guys are doing? What 75 years speaks to is um, stability and it speaks to our brand, which is durability and reliability. So uh, I, I say in the next 75 years, where will we be in the next 75 years? And that's what we've talked in terms of. Welcome to the Independent Thinking Podcast. This is your host, Rob Stott. You know, even in the world of appliances, uh, where everything here, especially in the United States, uh, it, bigger is often, you know, coincides with better in, in terms of how people like to think about homes and uh, those larger appliances, the, the the massive, you know, 40 plus inch ranges and the, the 48 inch French door refrigerators. I, I mean, it's all about bigger and better, right? But there's still that... I, I, large majority, honestly, of the population that lives in uh, spaces that can't really accommodate that size of appliance. And uh, for those consumers out there, there's a, a great brand that's celebrating a, a 75th anniversary this year in Danby Appliances and uh, ha lucky enough to have them as a vendor partner here at Nationwide Marketing Group. And today on the podcast, we've got Jim Estel, the owner and CEO of Danby, uh, who, who comes on to talk about you know how they're innovating in that space. It's it's such a unique category. You know, obviously they, they dabble in kitchen appliances and, and that's kind of their their sweet spot. And, um, you know, they got things like the beverage centers and ice makers and uh, wine coolers, of course, and, and some of the climate control things. Um, but uh, of course, also the smaller ranges and microwaves and uh, small dishwashers, other small appliances. And um, it's a unique spot and, and they're finding ways to innovate and, um, you know, continue to tell their story to the, the mass market out there. And, uh, of course, doing so through the independent retail channel as well with Nationwide and, and our retailers. So uh, cool to get to learn more about them, get to learn about Jim and uh, you know the vision he's bringing to the company and uh, where he sees things going as we approach 2023 and, and moving forward. So let's dive into it. This is Jim Estel, owner and CEO of Danby here on the Independent Thinking Podcast. <music> All right, we are back on the Independent Thinking Podcast and diving in right now with uh, one of our appliance vendor partners, Danby. Um, I, now, Jim, Jim Estel, CEO of Danby, you are, we talked about this before we hopped on, you're north of the border in Toronto. Is that where Danby is based as well? That's where head office is, but okay. we have um, four factories in the United States as well. So we're... Uh... North we sell more in the United States than we sell in Canada. How's that? <laughs> gotcha. Well, uh, Mr. Estel, we appreciate you jumping on the uh, the podcast and and sparing some time and uh, chatting about you know the appliance business and independent retail with us. So we're we're excited to have you on here today. Well, excited to be here. Yeah. So well, let's start with business. You know, we're wrapping up. We're sitting here as we're recording around mid November. Um, you know, the, the year's winding down. How? Have these, uh, you know, past few months of 2022 been, and and you know, we'll look ahead too to 23 in a, in a minute too. Well, um, the pandemic was very kind to the appliance business. Everyone needed fridges, everyone needed freezers. The last few months that started to cool down. I think it's a little bit of a flip from uh, uh, goods to services. So people go on holidays; they don't have enough as much money to buy a wine cooler um, or a, uh, a second fridge um, or a freezer. But there are trends that help the appliance industry, like uh, food inflation and restaurant inflation. You go out to eat and you say, wow, that's expensive. I better eat at home. And then you go have a glass of wine out and say, wow, I better drink at home. And, and next thing you know, you need a wine cooler. You need a, uh, a fridge. You need a, a freezer. Buy in bulk to save. So there are trends uh, that work in our favor. But right now, um, it's not the glory days of the early pandemic where uh, if you wanted a freezer and we make them, I might be able to get you one in 90 days. Like, what's that all about, right? No, the, the wait times are not nearly as long. And I, I know personal experience, we we saw that, you know, kitchen renovation projects, things like that, what those wait times are. I imagine it's got to be, you know, comforting that things are getting sort of, I mean, the way we've been talking about it, what is back to normal, right? So we, we say back to the pre-pandemic levels. Is that what you guys are, are seeing as well? That's right. It's back to pre-pandemic. And that has changed the buying philosophy 
of the large retail chains. They were in a more or less, if you have product, they'll, they'll give you an order for it. Now they're saying, oh, we need to be, they're not just in time, but more just in time. And that ripples through to the independents as well. So there's quite a bit of inventory in the channel. Um, but I believe just like most things in markets, people will overshoot. So there's going to be another shortage in six months because if, starting from day, if you ordered today 100,000 pieces to start production today, you don't get anything for six months. And so as soon as you say, oh, we're, we're so we're not going to order. So basically people are going to hold their orders. They're going to overshoot it and we'll have another shortage in six months. Um, I, that's just the way <laughs> the way things are in business, right? I, and that's right now, right? Or is that sort of, is this a new normal of the the kind of the ebb and flow of how you see appliances kind of the business being? No, I see that as uh, that's the way markets are. So when the markets soar, to, then they go down the next day. When the markets dump, then they come back up. And so we're just in a market. Um, and I do believe we could be in economic difficult times for the next year and a half or two years. But I'm old enough. I've lived through a lot of economic cycles. I don't think this one's going to be particularly bad. The fundamental numbers are still pretty strong. And uh, so I, I think it's, it's all survivable. Is it going to be the boom time? No, it's not going to be the boom time, but it's uh, uh, it will be a little tough. At my, I'm also old, so I always figure it never hurts to be conservative. Sure. What's the worst case? I'm wrong. And it's boom time, in which case, OK, I, I have to run a little faster to catch up. Right. Yeah. Well, it's funny. You mentioned the the fundamentals and things like that. And you know, the not specifically appliance bait related, but you look at the NRF just had their holiday retail forecast, what they expect. And still, I don't know the last time you could look back at a, you know, the quote unquote recession type era and there's six to 8% holiday retail sales growth during that, time, like while it's going on. So, and we're nearing what, like a trillion dollars spent during the final two months. It's it's interesting <laughs> to say the least. That's right. And, uh, and there's a little bit of a move from online buying back to in-store buying. People want yeah. to go into the store and buy it. So, and that helps the independent retailer because they, they're an in-store experience. Um, and appliances are pretty, a little nicer to buy in-store than they are to buy online because uh, it, you can't really tell the feel of a product from a picture. I mean, you get reviews, but then are the reviews views real or fake? And uh, so nothing beats going into a real store where you can touch it, feel it and say, hey, this door closes like a Mercedes or this door closes like a Lada, right? Yeah, right. Well, you, you, one of the things you mentioned that, that kind of uh, I, I keep thinking back to is the uh, sort of how you know consumers these last two years have bought uh, they bought appliances. Like uh, the business has it boomed during the the pandemic and kind of what we saw. Is there you know an opportunity? I, I imagine as all these new appliances are now out in the market in consumers' homes, service the the servicing of those appliances. Is there an opportunity there for you know independence and making sure that consumers are, you know, uh, experiencing the best of those appliances that are in homes? Uh, you know, there's not as much opportunity as there used to be because appliances are so reliable these days that, you know, basically if it's working, it's probably going to work for a decade. That, and if it doesn't work for a decade, then you didn't buy a quality appliance. And uh, so a company like mine, I, I say we failed if we sold it. If Danby makes a product doesn't last for 10 years, we failed. And uh, uh, so the service end, I don't think there's as much opportunity for independent retail where there is opportunities on the service end is people do want delivery and put in place because this is big, bulky, heavy stuff. Most people can't fit it in their cars and most people don't have a truck. And if they do have a truck, uh, how many friends do they have to borrow to move it into the house? And do they have the right dolly? And where if you go with a, a good independent uh, appliance dealer, they've uh, installed a hundred of these things and a uh, thousand of these things, they know how to move them and not hurt themselves. And, uh, and so that's a real uh, niche and an opportunity that people want and, uh, and need. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we, we see a lot of that, you know, retailers putting an emphasis on that because that's sort of I, I mean not only is it saving the the customer the agony of having to haul that appliance get rid of the old one you know as well that's the other side of it too that bringing in the new appliance taking that's out right. the old appliance uh but then also a lot of you know heavy lifting and manual labor maybe those free pizzas for their friends they have to you know uh, sway to come help them and that sort of stuff. it's those last couple of feet that you know really can make or break the experience for for the the retailer or for that customer 
That's right. And taking away the old appliances, the other point is um, all responsible independents recycle them appropriately. So the, the, it won't go into a landfill where it's going to get, uh, you know, bad gases released to the atmosphere and stuff like that. Appliances should be recycled by a proper appliance recycler and all the independents would have a uh, facility to do that, which you don't have that facility. You go and set it out on the curb and uh, that's not the environmental friendly way to do that. Certainly not. Uh, well, you gave the, the recap of sort of how things have been. As you look in and look ahead to 23, is there, you know, anything in particular that stands out to you as sort of what you're looking forward to about the next year or or what opportunities, you know, there are that could present themselves? Well, so when you look at the overall economy, I believe that people will be housed in slightly smaller units. So it's not going to be the boom for the 3,000 square foot home. It's going to be the boom for the 700 square foot apartment and condo and townhouse and basement apartment. So that means that in the appliance business, there will be more of a trend towards European sizing and smallish, smallish large appliances. Um, the other trend we talked about is uh, the food inflation will cause more people to buy freezers. So the number of people who had standalone freezers pre-pandemic was about 35%. That moved up to 50% in pandemic. And I believe that's going to keep going up. And the other thing that happens, once you have a freezer, you almost always have a freezer. And that happened with microwaves. It, you know, 98% of the people have microwave. They will always have a microwave. And uh, that that's just the way. To, and they, they think that is the only way to live is to have a microwave. And if you're moving out, you know, your, your son's moving out or your daughter's moving out, well, they need a microwave. Same thing is going to be true of some of the uh, appliances. The other growth area I see, wine coolers. And the reason for wine coolers, they become more of a norm in houses. And it's still only a couple of percent of the people that have wine coolers. So we can double to 4% or triple to 6%. That's huge growth in the industry, but it, it can do that. Where the, my example of microwaves, it can't double because 98% of the people have them and maybe a very rare few might want a second one. But at the end of the day, no, you can only go up that 2% plus replacement. So that's not going to be a um, huge growth market. And now as I'm speaking, I'm saying, yes, except people like we have a five in one microwave that does uh, air frying and convection oven. And so all of a sudden people want air fryers and convection oven. So there, there's still growth opportunities in every, in every segment. Yeah. You mentioned that. I mean, there, there's some of those, you know, the products you, that you see out there that it's you, the standard four piece, right? You get the four pieces of the kitchen and, but you know, those items are still being innovated and you mentioned that. So I, I was going to follow up and ask you uh, on some of that innovation. Is there anything, you know, sort of that you guys are doing in your products that, that you see that uh, sort of those new trends or new new uh, ways of, of using these appliances that that are, you know, kind of exciting you or, or getting you uh, fired up about, you know, this appliance space more than you already are? So I love the uh, the five in one uh, microwave because um, everyone wants an air fryer, but nobody has extra counter space or cupboard space to have an air fryer. And it is a healthier way to cook. And then convention, a confection oven, because I don't want to even turn on my oven to do something because I don't tend to be baking that big of stuff. But a convection oven, may, it's just a different way to heat. So that's a, a trend. Another trend is a trend towards electric away from gas. Um, yeah. Some uh, cities are saying they can't, you can't put gas in even. Um, and some, some, some places they're just not doing gas anymore. So there's a trend towards that. Um, I think induction will be big, but not that big this year. That's a future. And that's simply because induction is lower energy consumption and faster. And, um, but the problem right now is, of course, it's double the price. So it's very expensive. Gotcha. Um, oh, good. Anything else? No, that's good. <laughs> that's well, that's a lot of trends to, to cover and a lot of exciting stuff in this space. And, um, you know, we, we talked about, uh, you know, the brand and we'll do some more of that because you got some pretty exciting uh, yeah, some news this year that, that you guys are celebrating. But I, I want to give the chance for the the listeners out there, get to know you a little bit. We we, we didn't get to know Jim Estel and, and sort of your background and, and path to becoming, uh, you know, CEO of Danby. So tell us about you. Well, when I was in university, so it goes long back, way back, I am an engineer and I wanted to design circuit boards. I needed a computer, got a better deal if I bought two of them. So I bought two and sold one. And then I needed a printer. And next thing you know, I'm buying and selling computer hardware, software and peripherals. And I built that business to a couple billion in sales. I sold it, retired. 
And I sat on the board of Danby Appliances. Um, and then this, I was retired for almost five years, um, but I retired too young. I, I sort of did what I thought I was supposed to do, you know, grow a big company, sell it for a lot of money, retire. And then I learned retirement's not for me. And uh, the CEO resigned. I said I could go in and run Danby. So I started running it for six months. I said, oh, this is my next decade gig. That's what I'm going to do. And then uh, they said they wanted me to sell the company. And I said, well, how much for? And they told me, I said, okay, fine, I'll take it. So that's how I ended up owning Danby Appliances. It's kind of from the back. So I'm not backdoor. I'm not really a longtime appliance guy. I was on the board for five years before I became CEO. And then I've owned it for another five years. But Danby itself has been in business since 1947. Um, I was quite young in 1947. <laughs> <laughs> well what is it uh, you know you mentioned not a not a, a long time appliance guy but what is it about the space that uh you know sort of attracted you to it um i i like running a company of a certain size and um so i was dabbling in a bunch of startups a bunch of tech startups and stuff like that technology has come to appliances and everything has chips we, we learned that in the pandemic yeah. we couldn't freezers because we couldn't get chips like that and then you say well let's let's use old thermostats well then you can't meet energy standards so you, right. you can't even do that so everything's a chip these days um so i like running a company of a certain size and danby makes about two million appliances a year so that's good size uh for me and i like running a business and uh uh, so it's, it's great. <laughs> well, and it's cool too, because yeah, I mean, you, you think I, in just my own experience of seeing, you know, Dan be at our shows like primetime and, uh, what you guys bring to the table, you know, there's a, a, a number of appliance brands there, but some of the product that you guys bring, like the retro looking things that, that sort of stand out and it, it's sort of a real differentiator. And then you look, I mean, look through the website and kind of all the other areas that you, um, dabble in it, It's cool to see so many different I mean, it's obviously all appliance based, but you see like the the air filtration, like law, you know, it's the climate control stuff, the humidifier. Like, there's a lot going on there, and a lot of you know innovation as well. And and like I said, sort of the retro things, and so there's just a unique sort of portfolio of things I think to to keep you uh, interested in, in anyone looking, you know, uh, you know, certainly interested in what's going on with the brand. Yeah, I mean, uh, we sell a lot of air conditioners and you're gonna say, well, what's yeah. air conditioners not an appliance? But the, the commonality is they have compressors. Right. So that's why we have such a large air conditioning business. And I don't like climate change, but the fact is it's here and we're getting hot weather in places that never had air conditioning weather. And, and that means our air conditioners, which are portable and window air conditioners, that's what you use. In, when people build new buildings, in uh, New York, they put central air in. That's not our product. Our product is a window air conditioner, but we're finding window air conditioners demand out west in the uh, you know Oregon even like it, it's right. it's crazy demand for that. And for the independent appliance um, retailers, what I found is um, that's actually an interesting add-on to their business. So um, they can sell these air conditioners. And it's kind of incremental to the normal kitchen appliances. Um, the other area that we're quite strong is we're strong in second appliances. So we tend to be your overflow fridge, we're your bar fridge, we're your, uh, we have a bar fridge that has a kegerator function, uh, like has tap. So yeah. you can use it as a, a keg fridge, but when you don't use it as a keg fridge, you can use it for your, uh, your leftovers from Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, because most people probably shouldn't own a kegerator but that's too much beer to drink all the time. But you do want to have a party once in a while, in which case yeah. you, you turn it into the kegerator for the that weekend and then switch it back to the fridge when you're not using it as a kegerator. Oh, that, that's that's awesome and a great way to think. And you kind of started it there. But, you know, what, if someone's looking at, you know, Danby and, and kind of what you guys bring to the table, what is that sort of elevator pitch on the brand and, and what you're aiming to do or where you kind of fit in the market? So... We are leaders in second appliances, leaders in small, large appliances. How's that for s small white goods? Because we don't actually make great big, huge fridges for the huge, huge home. The huge, huge homes, we're their fridge in their basement. We're their fridge in their garage. We're the friend fridge in the, the, the bar and the, on the deck, the patio. Um, so that's really where, where we fit. So we're very large in secondary appliances, and uh, it, which is often even the wine cooler. So you, we're making wine coolers that sort of fit in with multiple decors, um, not just, uh, you don't have to have everything matching um, to make it fit. 
Well, and you say, you know, that's kind of the the niche you've carved. It's and it's a strong one too, because the brand's been around. You know, you mentioned the 47, 1947, right? So the right. That, that is a 75, do the math, 75 years is what was being celebrated this year and uh pretty big milestone. So what does that I mean? You mentioned it a just a handful of years com- in comparison to the the total life of the brand, uh, you know, of being there. But what does the, hearing that milestone mean to you and and to the company and and sort of what you guys are doing? Well, what seventy five years speaks to is um, stability, and it speaks to our brand, which is durability and reliability. So we're all about durable, reliable. Since nineteen forty seven, I mean, I get up and talk to the staff uh, and say, you know this decade, you know, in the next decades, we'll do this. So uh, I, I say in the next 75 years, where will we be in the next 75 years? And that's where, what we talk in terms of. No, that's all. And how are you, are you guys doing anything to celebrate? Um, yes, we did uh, a promotion. We, we're doing a promotion right now, actually with our customers. Um, and of course, promotions usually are price-based. So we have some awesome prices on stuff. And we've done a series of parties with our, our company um, and gave gifts to all the employees and stuff like that. Did the, you know, the t-shirts and the jackets and stuff like that. So it's all good. Oh, I gotta love it. And certainly, I mean, it's a big deal, certainly for sure. And we've seen a number of, uh, you know, our retailers this year celebrating their own milestones and how they kind of you know, uh, use it as a, an opportunity to get out in the community, connect with, you know, their consumers and everything like that. And so uh, awesome to see you guys are are doing it as well. But, um, you know, you, you kind of talked about it throughout, but, uh, you, you know, the opportunity for the independent in this space, um, you know, in, in the appliances space, what in working with Danby or, or sort of even vice versa, just seeing what they're doing as, as you're out, you know, at events and seeing independent retailers out there, um, is there an area that, that you think there's some opportunities for them to succeed in moving forward into the next year or so? Well, the reason that independents can uh, thrive, and I mean, they're all always going to be worried. Why, why don't people ever buy, buy at Home Depot or Lowe's instead of buying at us? Well, it's personal. It's personal service and, being, and, and speaking to knowledgeable people. So often it doesn't say on the box enough about what the product is. You need to say, what the product is. So the opportunity is to um, be personal. And to some extent, uh, smaller companies can be a little more nimble. And uh, so air, air filters, perfect example, COVID happened. Why are we in the air purifier business? Well, we're, it, it, it's a it's a thing with COVID. People, you buy air purifier. So all of a sudden, uh, there's a huge run on them. And independent appliance store can just say, oh yeah, this is a, another neat little niche that we uh, we go into. And they can know a little bit more than the uh, the national. It's all about knowledge, service. We talked about the deliver in place mm-hmm. um, business because uh, this stuff is big. Yeah, certainly. Even if it, you know the small big appliances, as you say, but no, they still need the the help delivering for sure. <laughs> no, but uh, awesome to uh, kind of to to hear you say that. I, I, any way you guys are applying that in sort of what you do as well, you know, taking those things obviously with you know getting into the the different categories like you mentioned that relate to. Uh, you know, COVID having been a thing, but, you know, sort of that message you're sharing, how are you guys implementing that or, or doing that, uh, you know, on the Danby side of the business? So we view our job as to help our customers sell product. So that's what we try to do is give them the tools and give them the information and help them sell because I'm successful if they're successful. And so our job is to help the independent uh, retailers thrive and uh, and win by trying to educate them, give them this uh, information, give them the insights, show them the, the sexy products. Um, the industry can be a little old and therefore it doesn't move as fast. But when you start to like educate that, yeah, a lot of people have bar fridges out on their deck now. That's the new thing, which means you need outdoor rated. Well, you can put an indoor rated fridge out there, but it's gonna that's gonna get rusty in three years. And it, by the way, it doesn't meet electrical certification, so I don't think you'll electrocute yourself. But you, it's it's just uh, gives you more things like garage rated freezers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you really want a garage rated freezer is uh, freezers are not good in extreme temperatures, either too cold or too hot. It doesn't work with the garage ready then it can go to uh, 120 degrees in the in the garage and you're fine. And, or else it can go down in uh, North Dakota to uh, um, minus 20 and still do fine. It's funny you mentioned that because that, I mean, obviously these sort of, uh, I don't want to call them ancillary areas of the home, but like the other areas where because of the pandemic, there was such a focus on getting 
you know, it, it, maximizing the use for, of those spaces like the outdoors and the garages that, you know, all these extra areas of the home where people are now, you know, realizing they can sort of rework and reuse in a way that makes more sense for them while they're spending more time at home. So it means obviously, you know, a perfect opportunity for a Danby to to come in there and and be sort of that appliance in that space that um, sort of ups the the use case for that that area of the home. But you mentioned the education side of it and not knowing that, you know, there there's certain ways things that, well, like, has there been, I, I'm sure someone's in the appliance business, they understand these things to an extent, but is there a big education or has there been a big ed- educational curve that, you know, retailers or consumers have had to overcome as far as, you know, what types of these secondary appliances can go in these spaces? Well, I, th- I think the independent retailers offer a great service by educating people because otherwise people are just gonna, they're going to go buy a bar fridge and they're going to put it outside. And they're going to be unhappy because three years from now it's rusting what? yep. and whatnot. And a good independent retailer says, you know, uh, for $30 more, uh, you get this outdoor rated fridge and it's going to last yeah. you outdoors. And it's meant to be outdoors. Right. Or saying, you know, the garage ready and stuff like that. So that knowledge definitely adds a, a service level. I think the other thing that is definitely true in appliances, nothing like touch and feel. You feel it and touch a product. It, it, it You really, see, if you go online, you can look at something and see these two freezers look the same, but when one of them, the door is solid, one of them you can't lift with one hand, one of them you can lift with one hand. It's like uh, <laughs> it, it, nothing like seeing the product. Yeah. No, uh, we can certainly appreciate that. And it makes, you know, a whole lot of sense. And um, it's brick and mortar. It's not going to, despite what they say out there, it's not going anywhere. And uh, certainly we'll have uh, some staying power here as, as people, especially now, you know, they've been, they were cooped up for however many years and um, stores had to shut down. Now they're back open and they're re- rearing and ready to go and get out in those stores and shop. So uh, we, you know, appreciate it and appreciate the, the insights you've been able to share, Mr. Estel and, uh, this was a lot of fun. You know, I, I know, you know, we're up on the holiday season and and things are moving quick. So we appreciate you having the availability and time to to jump on the podcast and talk with us. I, you know, certainly look forward to catching up again, maybe in Dallas, um, uh, down at primetime. We'll, we'll spend some time and, uh, you know, connect with you guys down there and, and see you at primetime. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Awesome. And thanks again to Jim for taking the time and, and diving into that conversation with us. Cool to learn about, you know, his background and uh, being that entrepreneurial type person and uh, where he, you know, sees Dan B kind of fitting into the mold and uh, into the industry moving forward here. So always cool to hear from our, you know, vendor partners and how they're working to support our independent retailers. So appreciate Jim taking that time. And as always, appreciate you listening to the Independent Thinking Podcast, and we'll catch you next time. 